Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'd like you to have a gander, if you don't mind, at Desync, which is a forthcoming first-person shooter published by Adult Swim Games and developed by the Forgone Syndicate. This is yet another game that we had a chance to look at in a fairly early state at PAX, and this one you might find quite interesting if you happen to be a fan of the game Bulletstorm. Certainly hope you remember that game from a while ago. I enjoyed that a great deal, despite some of its port issues. It was developed by company called People Can Fly, who were responsible for Painkiller, and one of the things that I think most people remember about that game is that it had what the game called skill shots, which were kills that required you to perform a specific set of actions, such as kicking an enemy into a cactus or anything along those lines. This game has something similar, they're called attack sequences, and many of them have to actually be executed in the style of a fighting game by performing various moves, which is interesting to say the least. And as you discover new attack sequences, they're going to be recorded in a codex, which is going to remind you exactly what's going on with that and how to best execute them. More to the point, some enemies, particularly powerful ones, have to be desynced, as they describe, such as the namesake of the title, and their abilities have to be shut down through a series of attack sequences that exploit their weaknesses, which I found to be rather interesting. There's a little message about attack sequences right there. It's going to show you what the evader sequence is. Dodge an enemy attack and then damage the enemy is an evader. Aggressor, dash forward, then kill the enemy. Mercy, headshot a staggered enemy. So if you do any of those things, you will trigger one of those attack sequences, and that will be recorded. You'll get a little cutscene the first time you do it, and that's going to record it in your attack sequence codex. You'll also see a weapon load out there with various different kinds of equipment that can be customized as you earn gear from level to level. The attack sequence is certainly a very interesting component of this game and I'll no doubt find it very enjoyable solely on that basis since I love the skill shot system in Bulletstorm. But what's also rather attractive about this game is its interesting Tron-like aesthetic. It's got this interesting interlaced overlay over everything. It gives an imagination of a digital world that is out of date somewhat, you know, something that very much might have been imagined in the 70s or 80s, but it still looks absolutely awesome. It's just a riot of neon, which I very much appreciate. And now we get to fight ourselves a little boss. And we're going to trigger a couple of these attack sequences in order to desync this enemy right here and do significant damage to him. As I said, you don't have to deal with those cutscenes all the time. They generally happen the first time that you trigger a particular attack sequence, so you're not going to be consistently interrupted. I view these little cutscenes as a teaching method more so than anything else. An issue that I had with Bulletstorm is that there were a lot of different skill shots you could do, but the game didn't do a brilliant job of explaining all of them. You had to discover a lot of them on your own, and that meant that you could more often than not get stuck into the same sort of cycle of doing the same kind of thing, which meant that the game was a bit more repetitive than it really had any right to be, since there were so many different ways to accomplish these kills. This game seems to have taken that idea and gone to its logical conclusion with it. It's something of a score attack game. It even tracks your playstyle and identifies what your playstyle was at the end of the level. And of course, there are going to be things like leaderboards online and all sorts of things like that, which are going to encourage you to perform kills in the most stylish way possible. Some people might argue and I think they'd be right on this, that games that encourage you to kill in non-optimal ways can sometimes be poorly designed. It was actually one of the criticisms that Super Bunny Hop brought up of Doom when referring to the game's challenge system. Interesting perspective. I don't necessarily disagree with him on that, but I think the good counterpoint to that is that encouraging you to perform kills in a suboptimal or unusual fashion can vary up the gameplay and stop you from entering this cycle of repetition. And that can very much make a game more boring if you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. A lot of gamers like to, and rightly so, pursue the optimal method, you know, the path of least resistance. They like to min-max, and games have been trying to shake that up for quite some time. Since if you end up finding the optimal method and do nothing but that, it can be quite easy to get a little bit bored of the game later on down the line. So incorporating a system like this that encourages you to screw around and encourage you to do different things can work, potentially. I have myself a new weapon here called the Shot Blaster, and there are a number of different attack sequences associated with this weapon as well. All the different weapons in the game give you access to different attack sequences, which, when performed, will give you a massive boost in score. For instance, 
if I set a trap using the weapon's alt fire and then knock an enemy back into said trap with the primary fire, then that in itself is an attack sequence. I can also grab these sidearms here, try not to run into the enemy in the process when I do that, which are going to give me a limited number of alt fire shots with an offhand weapon, which in turn will also give you a different number of attack sequences. There's the overkill right there, and that is an entrapment attack sequence. You can see you can chain multiple attack sequences together. I accomplished mercy there through the headshot, but by knocking him back into the trap, I got an overkill, which caused a score bonus as well as a drop. I was able to get some extra health and ammunition known as repair vials for some reason in this game. And everything just ended up turning into a string of colorful neon explosions and a bunch of multipliers and score bonuses, which is very, very satisfying, I have to say. The shooting is pretty good as well. At least when an enemy dies, they tend to fly across the map or they tend to be broken into little pieces. Although, I think they can maybe do a bit of a better job with attack feedback when you hit an enemy that doesn't die. Like, it's always important to make sure that a weapon feels like it's really making a dent in the enemy, that it's got an awful lot of impact. And yes, these are digital creatures, but I find that when I attack an enemy, I want to see it stagger back or I want to see some sort of visible damage because that indicates that my weapon is powerful and I'm doing the right thing. There are plenty of games that don't do that well, and I think that that lack of visual feedback can impede the enjoyment of the player as well as make it a little bit more difficult to learn what the best way is to play it. This game could maybe do with a little bit more of that, but I certainly find the explosions to be very satisfying. I certainly find the actual deaths, particularly the overkills, with the addition of the slow motion and the wonderful particle effects to be pretty damn fun. I love the fact that, you know, I hit that guy really, really hard and he went flying backwards, tumbling through the air. You know, that's the kind of player feedback that I'm looking for. Make sure that all your weapons have some sort of player feedback, even if they're not all that powerful. What you saw right there was the idea of a synced enemy, which comes with a unique bonus and upgrade. If you perform a certain style of attack sequence you can disable their upgrade and that's called desyncing them and those enemies are particularly powerful one final thing i'd like to highlight about this game is the wonderful electro soundtrack in the background that's just pounding away as you play so let me give you a little taste of that before i round the video up <laughs> There you go, folks. If you happen to be in the market for a shooter that focuses on skillful kills, that focuses on score attacks and multipliers, that has a wonderfully Tron-esque aesthetic, if you happen to like pulsing electro soundtracks, well, there's just a few reasons why you might want to keep a game like Desync on your radar. It's scheduled to release at some point on Steam in 2016. This was a fairly early demo of the project, and personally, I enjoyed my time with it a great deal. The short eight minutes I got, I certainly wish to be an awful lot longer. I love that emphasis on skill shots and stylized kills. As long as the game has enough weapon and enemy variety, as well as a wide variety of these so-called attack sequences, and gives you that genuine sense of progression between levels with gear customization and upgrades, I think we might very well be onto a winner here. Its name is Desync. Keep an eye out for it on Steam sometime in 2016. This is yet another piece of coverage that I brought to you from PAX East 2016. If you like the video, by all means, do feel free to click the like button. If not, the dislike button is right over there. And remember to check out our Avaganda series for some awesome games coming your way in 2016. I'll see you next time.